During the mid-19th century, Britain had an influx of Irish migrants that swelled its population. Jewish refugees fleeing pogroms in Russia immigrated to London's East End in Whitechapel, and its population increased to 80,000 inhabitants by 1888. As work and housing conditions worsened, children started dying even before the age of five. Robbery, violence, alcohol dependence became an ordinary event. The women drove themselves to prostitution to sustain their lives. Social tensions escalated. There were frequent demonstrations of public protests such as Bloody Sunday, anti-Semitism, nativism, and Whitechapel came to be regarded as a layer of immorality. Taking advantage of the prevailing conditions, men hunted down women, mainly the prostitutes, and there started a chain of murders from April 3, 1888 to February 13, 1891, which left the police chilled to the spine. The Metropolitan Police Service discovered and docketed 11 murders. Though all the murders could not be tied to a single slayer, five of them, called the Canonical Five, were traced to a man nicknamed Jack the Ripper. Slash wounds accompanied these murders to the throat, followed by extensive abdominal and genital area mutilation, removal of internal organs, and facial mutilations. The first two cases were to Emma Elizabeth Smith and Martha Tabram. Smith was robbed and sexually assaulted on Osborne Street at approximately 1.30 on April 3, 1888. Her face had been bludgeoned and there were cuts in her ears. She had a blunt object inserted into her vagina, which penetrated her peritoneum. She was diagnosed with peritonitis and died the following day at a London hospital. Tabram was murdered on the staircase landing in George Yard on August 7, 1888. She had suffered 39 stab wounds to her throat, lungs, heart, liver, spleen, stomach, and abdomen, with additional knife wounds to her breasts and vagina. A bladed instrument had been used to deliver all cuts and by a right-handed individual. The next victim found was Mary Ann Nicholas on Friday, August 31, 1888, at 340 in Bucks Row. She had been last seen only an hour before the discovery of the murder by a Mrs. Emily Holland. Miss Nicholas had shared a bed at night with her when they had lodged a night in Thrall Street in Spitalfields. Two deep gashes cut her throat, one severed with tissue down the vertebrae. Her vagina had been stabbed twice. A jagged wound ripped the lower part of her abdomen open, causing the bowels to protrude. A week later, September 1888, on a Saturday, the body of Annie Chapman was discovered at 6 o'clock near the doorway of the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street in Spitalfields. Her throat also had the two deep cuts and abdomen ripped open entirely. A section of her flesh was placed upon her left shoulder and part of her skin and flesh with her small intestines were removed and placed above her right shoulder. Autopsy revealed her uterus, sections of her bladder and vagina were missing. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were both killed on Sunday, September 30th, 1888, in the early morning. Stride's body was discovered at one o'clock in Duffield's yard. Her cause of death was a single incision across her neck with a severed left artery and trachea. Eddowes' body was found in a corner of Mitre Street in London three quarters of an hour after the discovery of Elizabeth Stride's body. Her throat was cut ear to ear, abdomen ripped open by a long, jagged wound, and intestine placed over her shoulder. A section of it was completely detached and placed between her body and left arm. Her kidney and parts of her uterus were missing. The disemboweled body of Mary Jane Kelly was discovered in her room of 13 Miller's Court at 10.45 on Friday, November 1888. Her face was disfigured beyond recognition, throat severed down to the spine, abdomen emptied, her uterus kidneys, and one breast was placed beneath her head, and viscera from her body was placed beneath the foot of her bed. Sections of her abdomen and thigh were placed on her bedside table. Her heart was missing. The police conjectured that each of the canonical five had been perpetrated at night, on or close to a weekend, either at the end of a month or a week, 
and the altitude of the mutilations had been increasing from one case to another. It was discovered that Chapman had been seen with a dark-haired man wearing a brown deer stalker hat and overcoat. Stride had been seen in the accompaniment of a man close to Burner Street on September 29, 1888, but several witnesses provided unique descriptions of her companion. A local cigarette salesman, Joseph Lewind, who had passed the square with two friends before the murder, described seeing a fair-haired man of shabby appearance with a woman resembling Eddowes, but he could not confirm his description. Although the chain of murders continued until 1891, police were unsuccessful in locating the murderer. A team of policemen conducted house-to-house inquiries. Butchers, slaughterers, surgeons, and physicians were suspected of the mutilations. Over 2,000 people were interviewed, 300 investigated, and 80 detained. Subsequently, a letter was delivered to the police, along with a kidney. It was signed, Jack the Ripper. The police, however, discovered that it had been a hoax from the media in order to increase their newspaper circulations. The public believed in the theory of a single killer, Jack the Ripper, because of the crimes and would not let him be forgotten. In September of 1888, a group of volunteers formed the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee to apprehend this perpetrator. They patrolled the neighborhoods at night and even petitioned the government to announce a reward of 50 pounds for information on the case. The concentration of killings around weekends showed Ripper was a regular employee. Other conclusions were that he was possibly a doctor or an aristocrat. Colin Wilson even coined the term Ripperology to study and analyze the Ripper case. There were many theories about the identity and profession of Jack the Ripper. Some contemporary figure like Queen Victoria regarded him to be a butcher or a cattle driver who plied between London and Europe. At the end of October, the head of the CID, Robert Anderson, asked the surgeon Thomas Bond to give his opinion on the case. The opinion offered by Bond was that the murderer was a man who did not even remotely have any scientific skill and knowledge. He wrote, All five murders, no doubt, were committed by the same hand. In the first four, the throats appeared to have been cut from left to right. In the last case, owing to the extensive mutilation, it is impossible to say in what direction the fatal cut was made, but arterial blood was found on the wall with splashes close to where the woman's head must have been lying. All the circumstances surrounding the murders lead me to form the opinion that the women must have been lying down when murdered, and in every case, the throat was first cut. Jack the Ripper remains a mystery to all who seek his identity. The immediate aftermath of the murders was that Jack the Ripper became a children's boogeyman. He was portrayed as a phantom stalking Whitechapel, as a disembodiment of social neglect in a punch cartoon in 1888. Ripper's image was borrowed in horror stories such as Dracula's Cloak or Victor Frankenstein's Organ Harvest. Jack the Ripper featured in hundreds of works of fiction, such as novels, short stories, poems, and even comics. In 2006, Jack the Ripper was selected as the worst Briton in history by BBC History magazine. A Jack the Ripper museum was opened in London in 2015. It attracted criticism from Tower Hamlet's mayor, John Biggs, and other protesters. In 2021, when Jack the Chipper fish and chip shops opened in Greenwich, similar outcomes followed with threats to boycott the premises. Although he was a brutal murderer, he is remembered to this day and receives the attention that created his solitary self.